Chapter 1, The Hills Above Metz, France, October 3rd, 1944, 12.02 p.m. Private First Class Robert W. Holmblund is scared. He believes his life may be over at age 21. The American assault is just two minutes old, two minutes that feel like 20. The private serves as an explosives expert in the 3rd Army, Company B, 11th Infantry Regiment, 5th Infantry Division. Holmblund is a student from the American heartland who left trade school to join the war. His senior commander is the most ferocious general on the Allied side, George Patton, Jr. But unlike Patton, who now oversees his vast army from the safety of his headquarters 25 miles behind the front, Holmlund and his men, a baker company, are in grave danger as they sprint toward the heavily defended German fort known as Driant. German machine gun bullets whiz past Holmlund's helmet at twice the speed of sound. Heads and torsos shatter all around him. U.S. artillery thunders in the distance behind them, laying down cover fire. The forest air smells of gunpowder, rain, and the sharp tang of cordite. The ground is nothing but mud and a thick carpet of wet leaves. Here and there, a bramble vine reaches out to snag his uniform and trip his feet. Over his broad shoulders, Homeland wears a block of TNT known as a satchel charge. Grenades dangle from his cartridge belt like grapes on a vine and in his arms, rather than carrying it by the wooden handle atop the stock, Holmlund cradles his 15-pound, four-foot-long Browning automatic rifle, or bar. He carries it as he would an infant. Only this baby is a killing machine capable of firing 653-inch bullets per minute. Though he doesn't show it, Robert Holmlund is scared, despite all that firepower, just like every single man in this lethal forest. But there's no time to indulge his fear right now. No time for homesickness or doubt. Fort Triant looms 400 yards distant. Everything about the fortress is a mystery, from the location of its big 150 mm howitzers to the maze of tunnels deep underground where its Wehrmacht inhabitants eat, sleep, pray, clean their rifles, plan their battles, and then suddenly poke their heads out of secret openings to kill Americans. Patton has ordered Baker Company to get inside Driant. The best way to do that is to climb on the roof, which is concealed by mounds of earth. From there, it's a matter of finding a doorway or some other hidden opening that will allow Baker to descend and wage war in the tunnels. Baker is part of a two-pronged assault. On the opposite side of the fort, the men of Easy Company are also on the attack, but they do so warily, for Driant has already bloodied them once. It happened six days ago. Skies were clear. P-47 fighter bombers screamed in low on the morning of the assault, dropping napalm and thousand-pound bombs. American artillery then pounded Driant, shelling the Germans with deadly accuracy. Easy Company launched their attack alongside the men of George Company at 1415 hours under a heavy smoke screen. They had no way of knowing that the aerial bombardment and ground artillery had virtually no effect on the Wehrmacht fighters nor that the enemy was snug and secure within Driant's 15-foot-thick walls and in hidden forest pillboxes. Step by step, thinking themselves unseen, the American soldiers advanced, fingers on triggers as the men scanned the forest, waiting for the muzzle flashes that would expose the enemy. But the Germans did not shoot. Not yet. So Easy and George crept closer to Driant. With each passing moment, they became more convinced that the smoke screen had completely concealed them. They marched closer and closer, and still no German gunshots. Soon, a thick tangle of barbed wire loomed before the Americans, marking the outer perimeter of Driant's defenses. There was no way through the razor-sharp coils. The advance ground to a halt. Then, the Germans opened fire. The autumn afternoon was rent by a terrifying sound the Americans knew all too well. Their slang for the high-speed ripping sound of a German MG-42 machine gun is Hitler's zipper. To the Wehrmacht, this killing tone is simply the bone saw. MG-42s opened up from every direction. Bullets tore through the woods at 1,200 rounds per minute, capable of killing a man from more than a half mile away. But the machine guns were just the beginning. Soon mortars, rifles, and even heavy artillery pounded the Americans from every direction. And just like that, the American attack was over. Soldiers hugged the ground for four long hours as German gunners pinpointed their positions and took slow, deliberate aim. 